Okay, so we waited our one minute of uh, thumb pressure. Uh, typically afterwards, uh, normally we wait one minute of thumb pressure and then we let it sit for two minutes. And after that, the strain gauges should be installed. If, um, you should basically be ready to take the tape off and uh, start soldering. Uh, we're gonna use uh, a soldering unit. I'm gonna pull it over and I am left-handed, so I'm gonna be coming in from the left side. This unit is a it's a HACO unit. Uh, we use these in our training program. And what I like to do, instead of using like the sponges that they give you with the soldering unit, we like to use a dry gauze pad. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a minute here and pin the tip of this pencil. Uh, not sure who was using it before me, but I'll go ahead and take it and tin it. Put that back in the holster so that's ready to go. And we're going to use um, the solder. This is Eutectic solder. It's 361A 20R 25. 361 is a melting temperature. The A means it has antimony. The 20 is the diameter of it. R means it has a rosin flux core. And then the 25 is the length of it. It's a 25 foot spool. So we're ready to go ahead and remove this tape and uh, go ahead and tin the tabs of the strain gauge. So what I'm gonna do is lift the tape and I'm gonna pull it directly back on itself like this. I'm trying to minimize the amount of force pulling on top of the strain gauge. And once you get past the gauge, you can go ahead and take it off. And now's a good time for an optical inspection. Now we wanna take a look at them. Now did you get the gauges in the right spot? Does it look like that they're down? Uh, you know, evenly spaced in this case, and I think they look pretty good. Both are right along that burnished alignment mark. Uh, they're both about the same distance in from the edge, and I would expect to get very similar results between uh, these two strain gauges, and that's what we're here to prove. So once I've got that, the one of the things I'd like to mention before I go further, both of these gauges are encapsulated. So you could go ahead and start soldering the leads onto the strain gauge. You wanna tin the tabs first, and then we'll work with the wire, and then we'll connect it on, we'll tape it in place, and we'll finish the connections. Um, if you, Sometimes you'll find that you don't wanna use the entire size of the tab, and that's fine. You can take a piece of paper drafting tape and just maybe cover 20 or 30 percent of it to make them a little smaller and I think I'm going to do that just because sometimes it makes a neater looking uh, solder connection. So I'll just take a piece of paper drafting tape and since the gauges are placed so well I can use the same piece of tape to cover up both of them. If these gauges would have been open faced you really have to do this but when they're encapsulated you really don't. It's purely to make it look better. Now, once you've got the tape in place, you're ready to go ahead and tin the tabs of the gauge. I'll just clean the soldering tip off, feed a fresh pull of solder on it. Take the soldering tip. What I like to do is try to lay the solder right over top of it, the tab, and then press the iron through Count one, count two, lift it up. And there you go. Now once you've got those ten, <clears throat> now you can focus on your wires. And this is one of them. We're going to construct a three wire uh, quarter bridge circuit. I've already prepped these. These have a red, a white, and a black insulated conductor. And since it's a three wire system, I'm gonna put the uh, red wire by itself and the black and the white, we twist them together. And these are gonna be connected right onto the tabs of the gauge. This happens to be a vinyl insulated 30 gauge wire. It's probably about 18 to 20 inches long. And we're gonna use that because that's really all the length that we need uh, for these gauges. Now you'll notice that I've got it stripped and if I were to just solder it onto the ends here, we'd be concerned about that shorting onto the aluminum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim that to make it shorter. 
And ideally what you would find is that the exposed conductor would rest right on top of the solder connections and the insulation would be on top of the backing on the strain gauge to make sure that you're electrically insulated. So you really trim off most of this exposed conductor and leave probably about a sixteenth of an inch of it left. So I'll do that. So I'll just take my finger, put it over the end, take this, come down to about here, trim it, and I'll compare it. And so yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks about right. And then the other thing I'm going to do is, is take the diagonal cutter and I will nick the insulation between the red and the white conductor. All I'm trying to do here is uh, just give me a little bit more room to kind of move it around if I need to. And this is a point too. This is a point too where you can take your, your tweezers and just kind of move move these things around a little bit. And there is no polarity associated with the strain gauge, so you could put the red conductor on the right or the red conductor on the left. I think I'm going to go with the red conductor being uh, on the left. So I'll take a piece of paper drafting tape. It's about this long, about an inch or so. Put it up against the edge here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a curve in it, like that. And the reason I do that is when I flatten it out, it'll have a tendency to push down on the connection and keep these going down into those solder connections. So I'll take that, lay it over top of it, just press it down into place. And it looks to me like they're in about the right spot, so I'll go ahead and reflow the connection on both of those. Doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'll go ahead and start with the red one. There's that one, and then I'll do the black one. And here, this should be very quick, very simple. Press through and lift it up. Okay, and that one has the wire in place, and now we'll move on to the second one. <clears throat> Again, I've already got this wire. I've got it stripped and prepped. I've also tinned it as that one. So uh, it takes a few extra minutes, but as you're installing gauges, you know, part of it not to forget about is prepping your wire. And that normally means you strip it of the insulation. In this case, we twist some of these conductors together and then we also tin them. So basically this one is ready to go as well. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'll take it and compare it. Decide how much of that exposed conductor to trim off. Go down here about a sixteenth of an inch or so. That was a little bit long, so I'm going to trim it again. That looks about right. So then I will also, again, just like before, I'll nick the insulation between the red and the white conductor. And that just allows me to kind of move things around a little bit. So I'll take my tweezers and I'll kind of shape it a little bit so that it matches up to the tabs of the strain gauge. About like that. Compare it. It's probably a touch on the long side, so let me trim it just one more time. Okay. And then I'll keep the same polarity. I'll keep the red conductor to the left. The white and the black will go to the right. And same thing as before, I'll take a piece of paper drafting tape, roughly about an inch long, doesn't have to be exact. Place it up near the end. And I'll take it and kind of fold it like that. Put a little curve in it. Just like that. And then I'll take it and tape it in place. Press it down so it doesn't move. And it looks like it's in the right spot. So once I get it in the right spot, I'll go ahead and reflow those connections too. Should be very quick, very easy to do this. So 
That's one of the advantages of CEA series gauges. It is very quick and very easy. Whether you're in a laboratory setting or maybe you're out in the field, really either way it should be that simple and that easy. Now you might think that you're done at this point and you are done with the wire connections in terms of connecting the leads on the gauge and prepping the tabs and tending them and all that. But a major part of strain gauge installation is cleaning everything up. So the very next step for us, once we've got the leads in place, is now to start removing this tape and more importantly, remove any residual flux that may have been left behind from the soldering process. So we're gonna do that next.